Good morning guys, Jill here with North Texas Vegetable Gardening. Canning recipes, a little bit of everything. Read in the news yesterday that stockpiling has begun. Shortages are back on track. Um, we are three days away from election. I'm hearing all kinds of things that our hospitals are full here in the DFW area. I got lots of reporting to tell you uh, from people all over the country what they're seeing in their grocery stores. Um, I wanna show you what I saw in mine. I was surprised at some shortages and I was surprised at uh, some areas that were not short. So stay tuned, let me share with you what I saw. Um, I will tell you that there was a sense of urgency in that store <laughs> that I hadn't seen since March. Kind of was a little nerve ending, I guess. So I was, uh, I felt the need to just get in and get out and it's what I did. I just picked up a couple of things that I felt like we were gonna need. And uh, so let me show you what's going on. Okay guys, I did run by the um, medicine aisle and everything looked to be about the same, so I didn't uh, get a picture of that. And here is the dairy aisle. And it too is looking about the same that it has looked over the last uh, four to six weeks. I do want you guys to notice as I go through these that there were tons of stalkers, tons of stalkers, and they were constantly replenishing. This is one of the aisles that I hadn't visited for you guys. It is the laundry detergent and the bleach aisle. You can see I was able to get some bleach and they had plenty of laundry detergent. Uh, you can see there's the gain and um, their brand and um, I think there was some Tide and Purex so everything looks to be okay there. Here is the cleaning aisle. Notice there are no Lysol wipes, there are no Arm & Hammer wipes, there are still some uh, Clorox bleach cleaner but um, this has taken a big dent. A couple of weeks ago you may recall from my pictures that uh, there was plenty of stuff on the cleaning aisle. That has taken a hit. You can see there, this is where the Clorox bleach and, or I'm sorry, this is where the Clorox wipes were, and this is where the Arm & Hammer wipes were. They're all gone. And here's the paper towel aisle. It's certainly not looking like it did a couple weeks ago, is it, guys? Um, not, not stacked up to the top of the shelves like it has been. And um, all those that you see on top, there was nothing behind them. Here is the toilet paper aisle. You can see the, there's still toilet paper to be had, but it's certainly not stocked like it was a couple of weeks ago. And I want you to notice these right here. This toilet paper, four or five weeks ago, I got for $2.50. This time around, I believe it was $11.99 or maybe even more. Um, but it was a huge, huge price increase. And these are the wipes. Notice the wipes here, there are none. Um, these had been pretty stocked as well, and um, I was surprised to see that they were taken up and uh, none left on the shelf. On to some more of the dairy. This is the butter. You can see it's not stacked up like it was last time. Uh, they got the name brand, the Land of the Lakes up there, but um, I usually buy the Kroger uh, butter, and you can see that it's uh, taken kind of a hit as well. Cheese aisle's looking okay, although it's not as fully stocked as it was um, two weeks ago whenever I did my last video. Coffee aisle, uh, looking about the same. There are some, uh, some space in there, or there's quite a bit of space in there, actually. If you look at the bottom row, the Folgers, uh, there's nothing behind it. And guys, this is the baking aisle. Um, it was really hard to get through. There was quite a few people on there, and it was the sugar and the flour and the baking things, and uh, people were just kind of uh, backed up on this aisle. And looky here, look at all these canning jars. I'm gonna show you something here in a minute too that you'll be quite surprised, but this is more stock than I've seen it throughout this whole ordeal. Vinegar looks a little bit better filled in, uh, but there's still some gaps. On to the canned goods, I um, did see still a, a pretty decent stock but if you look up there uh, to the left you'll see that there's nothing stocked behind those Del Montes. Here is another view I think this is around where the corn and the spinach um, the yams are I did pick up some yams we do know that the holidays are coming. Here's the soup aisle it's looking okay not really seeing anything to be concerned about yet but again I want to emphasize to you there were tons of stalkers on each aisle that was just keeping things stocked. Um, almost couldn't get down some of them. 
And here's the canned tomatoes. I know that I've heard from uh, several of you guys that you're having a hard time finding canned tomatoes. This is the first time I've seen it hit like this. Um, quite a big, quite a big difference uh, than I've seen in the last month or so. Poultry was looking fine, guys, although the, the pricing was still the same. It was uh, way up there. I think I paid almost $12 for a whole chicken, and I paid $10, I think, for chicken breast this time around. So it was about a buck or two down. Here is more chicken. It was uh, pretty well stocked. I was surprised to see that our meats, because this is the beef section, and it was pretty well stocked too. Um, I did get a roast, and it was, I think, uh, $14. So that's a little bit more than I'm used to paying. I can normally get them at Kroger for about seven or eight dollars. So things are still going up, but um, they look to be okay stocked for now. This is the bread aisle, and you can see there are three separate people, maybe four, on there that's uh, stocking the bread, and uh, they were trying to keep it going. It was the, the hamburger buns and the hot dog buns and just the regular sandwich bread. And look what I found look at that whole pallet of canning supplies that I'm sure that they're gonna start putting out. There was uh, some spaces back there on that last picture I showed you where they can fit some of this, but uh, look, they're pretty well stocked on the canning stuff and I'm so thankful, but I think it's because we are at a lull um, between uh, our fall gardening and uh, starting our spring gardening. So if you go into your store and you see the canning supplies, you need to pick them up now. Get them now because come springtime, they're gonna be in short supply. Produce is looking just fine. Um, had plenty of produce, although some of the prices were up. I paid uh, $3.99 for a bag of potatoes, where I normally pay probably $2.99, $2.59. It just varies. But yeah, um, prices were up on some of the vegetables. Here is the spaghetti. You can see it has taken quite a dent. Um, I picked up a pack, in fact, that was open. It went all over the floor. I was very embarrassed, but um, thankfully there was a stalker. And um, I did get her attention, and she had it cleaned up pretty quick. But uh, look here, you can see that there's uh, quite a big dent in our pasta. And here are more of the uh, tomatoes, the tomato aisle, the diced. And uh, this was kind of close to the spaghetti sauces, so I wanted to go ahead and get this. But look, look at that bottom shelf and look at that top shelf. Yeah, I'm surprised at some of this. Here are the snack aisles. My husband is a big peanut eater, and look, there's no peanuts. No peanuts right there. Um, so the snacks, surprisingly, have been hit, and I'll show you another place. These are the chips. This is the Kroger brand chips, which is what I prefer. These are the tortilla chips, and I'm assuming, you know what, it could be because the football season is here and people are getting their snacks together, but I've never seen uh, Kroger's chips, their brand of chips, taking a hit like this. Um, this is a... Uh, in fact, I hadn't seen any of the chips being taken through the whole ordeal uh, since March. So in reading some of the comments, let's go to Natalie here. She says that she always gets lamb at Aldi's when they have it as a treat. And uh, she pays about $12 to $14 for a pack. And it lasts two meals for her and her husband. Sadly, the same size was $18 to $22. They had to walk away from that, she said. Let's go on to the next one. Now, guys, there are so many more. You need to go read these comments. I think that you need to be informed as to what's going on. We have comments from Canada, from Australia, from Indonesia. People are reporting exactly uh, what they're seeing in their grocery stores and what the prices are doing. Here is uh, from Gail. She uh, is appreciating us taking um, her on a tour of our grocery store. She's in Australia. Uh, she has noticed lots of gaps happening and uh, that the uh, real estate for their certain products is getting smaller on the shelves. A lot of people are also commenting that the packaging is getting smaller and the prices are going up, so you're getting less for more. Um, she's talking about her tomato sauce is only in uh, a squeeze bottle instead of the place on, on the shelf that she normally got. Luckily for us, we grow a lot of our own food. If you're not gardening, you wanna start looking into that now. And believe it or not, uh, planting for the spring is right around the corner, especially if you're starting your own seeds. So let's look at uh, Danny here, Danny Scobie. He is in West Central Indiana. Chicken is still plentiful and less than half the price. Sounds like it would uh, be good for you to start raising chickens. So it's not all bad news. I did uh, get quite a few comments of other people saying that their grocery stores were fine, their prices were stable. Uh, but unfortunately, the bulk of what we're seeing is uh, increases in less availability. 
So uh, Joseph says here that he couldn't buy yeast anywhere. He had to order from Amazon. He's in the southwest part of Pennsylvania. Um, Walmart is short on coffee creamers. Clorox wipes um, are always gone, as always, he says. Some canned goods are missing, mo mostly the veggies. The food prices have been going up and up. He says that uh, he don't buy meat there. It's too expensive. Susan states that at her local store in uh, southwest Florida had pork sirloin for 99 cents a pound yesterday. Pasta was 50, 50 cents a box. And uh, she is uh, being a good, gracious uh, person, and she is buying quite a bit of this and donating to her local pantry. We encourage you guys to do that as well. But she's seeing some really good prices there in southwest Florida. Andrew, he says that he works in the food production, and he makes uh, his company makes the French toast sticks. Very recently, we have picked up um, so many new accounts. Our grocery store chains are rather desperate to acquire foods. I'm shocked to see what our products go for in the stores. Prices have all but doubled within the past year. Um, it says his area is in big central Pennsylvania, food production area, pork central, or I'm sorry, pork, chicken, and dairy. Usually these are the items very cheap. We have Earthstar here said that they have a brisket in their freezer that they paid $18 for back in March or April, and we did the same thing. It says now the same cut is around $40. Actually, here in Texas, we're seeing briskets around $70. So uh, where we got one for about maybe $20, $22, it's about uh, $70 to $74 now. Kay states, these are the facts. As a meat eater in August, the average price for packs of anything was $5.25 to $8 yesterday. Chicken thighs, boneless thighs, and breasts were between $21.50 to $23.50 per pack, and beef was nearly $15.65 per pack. She's saying buckle up. Meanwhile, in northwest Pennsylvania, the great value 48 to 72 row pack went up $2. Head of lettuce was $1.49. It's now $2.69. He's also saying that there's smaller sections um, of goods. There's smaller real estate on the shelves, guys. In Easter Canada, some meat prices have doubled um, or more. Regular items are up 10, 50, 100% without sales and coupons. My wife states that they're going to be doing without a lot of items. I'm afraid that that's going to hit quite a few of us guys. So I'm hearing a lot of good things about Aldi. Um, I'm hearing that they have a pretty good stock of certain meats. This person here says that they do their markdowns uh, first thing in the morning on meats. Uh, that are a day or two from expiring. Uh, first markdown is 50%. Day of expiry is 75%. For example, you can get a huge family pack of fresh chicken breasts for $1 to $2. So start looking for those guys. So there you guys have it. It's not the complete story. Again, there are over 700 uh, comments just on the last video I did. There's several hundred more on the other two that I did on updates. We are definitely seeing... Um, some uh, some stockpiling here in the DFW area, and I'm sure you probably are too. Um, again, it's three days before the election. You want to make sure that you're prepared um, in the event of civil unrest. You want to make sure that you're prepared in case they start to do more lockdowns, which I'm not sure that we'll even go that route, but you never know. Anyway, um, if you like this video, we ask that you click that like button and be sure and subscribe to our channel. We got lots of things going on. Uh, not only are we concerned about um, what's going on in our country with um, the election coming up and the virus, all kinds of stuff. But uh, we are also gardening and we want to show you how to garden as well. We want to help you learn to grow your own food and preserve it. So be sure and subscribe to our channel. There's lots of great videos out there on gardening and preserving. Take care. God bless. Have a wonderful weekend and we will be checking back in with you guys. Be safe. Be so very safe. Take care.